China is one big adventure. And it has been since the first day I arrived, and it will continue to be so, I believe, until I leave, uh, if I ever do leave. Um, and it's particularly an adventure when you come from a place like, like I do, from the UK, where the culture is completely different from the culture that you find in China. So the, the culture is different, the history is different, the people are different, the language is different, the food is different. Every single day you, you stumble across a new experience when you're in China. And it's that that keeps you interested in the place and keeps you wanting to come back if you visit or, in, in my extreme case, makes you just want to stay there and live there. Um, and travelling in China as well, it's not just living there, but travelling in China is one big adventure, um, which is why it's so attractive. Um, sure, there are difficulties. Um, the language barrier is a real big problem and, and it's, it's, it can be very difficult. Um, the you know, weird types of foods that you're going to come across will be strange to, to many people who've never been to China before and that is something to overcome um, and the sheer size of China is something that's difficult to get your head around and makes it difficult to plan a trip but one great thing about China is you have all these difficulties but you have 1.3 billion people helping you overcome them I find that People in China, more than any other place I've travelled in, are so unbelievably helpful to foreigners or to anyone who is quite sure of how to do things when they're there. So you do come across these problems, but you always find someone, even if you're not really looking for them, who's going to help you out. And that makes travelling in China so much more easier, uh, so much easier than you than you imagined to begin with. Um, to give you an example, when I, when I was first uh, traveling just on my kind of backpacking trip, the first time in China, I couldn't speak any Chinese. And I was in a, a city called Wuhan, which is in central China, uh, on the Yangtze River. And it's not a very touristy place, even though it's a big city. Um, I was looking for an internet cafe, but couldn't find one. I, I couldn't read or uh, any of the Chinese characters, and there was no English. So I just asked someone uh, on the street if they knew of an internet cafe. I, I tried to look up in my, in my Lonely Planet Guide actually how to say the words for internet cafe and they didn't really understand me so I, I just kind of used the, the sign language for internet. It just kind of went like that and they, they understood. So uh, this guy then took me uh, in this direction, kind of beckoned me over and so I was like, oh great, okay, he's obviously going to an internet cafe, I'll follow him. And we went around a few streets and uh, ended up three or four, four blocks later outside an internet cafe. And I tried to wait, wait to thank him and then he went off back in the direction that we'd just come from. And it was then clear to me that he wasn't going to this internet cafe. He was doing whatever in that part of the city and he just in his own time, led me to this internet cafe, 10, 20 minutes walk away from where we were, just for the sake of helping me, for no, no other reason. And uh, it's situations like that that make traveling in China a lot easier than you realize. Um, I just want to read out one thing uh, on, on a similar vein uh, to that. I wrote an article um, on the Lonely Planet website about uh, top tips for China first timers a little while ago. And someone commented on it. Can you include your top tips generally in China? Uh, yes, yeah, I will do. I will, uh, I will come to that. Let me, let me first just read this out. Um, I will definitely come to that. Because um, I have kids of my own, so I, I'm well placed to, to tell you about that. <laughs> um, but anyway, th this, uh, this person uh, um, commented on, on this article that I'd written, because I'd mentioned about Chinese people helping out foreigners. And they said this, I was trying to get to the zoo in Beijing by bus from the Summer Palace. Soon I realised I was on the wrong bus. No one spoke a word of English, but a young couple understood what I was after. Got me off the bus, onto the metro, into a taxi, paid for my ride, and left me right at the front entrance of the zoo. I had assumed that they were going to the zoo as well, but that was not the case. Just amazing. Now, there aren't that many places, certainly not major cities like Beijing, with 15, 16 million people, where someone will just, without being prompted, 
help you go out of their way to help you, even give you money, paying for the taxi ride to get to the place you want to go to. Um, and I think that's, that's for me, one of the things which makes travelling in China such an amazing experience. We have all these fantastic sights, amazing scenery, fantastic food, but the people really are what make it. And uh, I'd urge anyone who's kind of a little bit worried and a bit hesitant about going to China because of all the difficulties that I mentioned before, just to give it a go because people there will help you. Um, so traveling with children. Um, uh, traveling with children is, is that, it's actually, it's actually um, more difficult to pick uh, child-friendly sites in China than it would be in a place like Singapore, um, where the city is um, more westernized, cleaner, um, more better set up for families. Um, but the thing, the thing with China, like I was saying just earlier with uh, the people being very friendly, people are also very, very into children. That you, children are great icebreakers. And you'll find that when you're traveling around China, whatever part you're in, the locals will talk to your kids and play with your kids without even being able to speak English, just because they love children. Um, and that can make it feel like you're in a child-friendly place, even if you're not actually at a, an amusement park or at a place which is for children. Um, so, for example, you can go to any restaurant in China and children will be made to feel welcome. You'll never have to sit in the children's section or there's no, there's no place where children aren't allowed. Um, so they'll always be made to feel very welcome. We, we often, when we go to a restaurant, I've got a, a very young daughter, just uh, 18 months, 19 months old, and uh, we'll often uh, go into a restaurant and the, the waitresses will just pick her up and go and play with her. And, um, Half an hour later, they'll bring her back. With her, we've almost forgotten that she was there. You know that people like that China. They're just very, very friendly, um, and it makes traveling with children a lot easier. Um, if you're looking for particular sites to go to, then obviously the big cities are going to be uh, easier because they'll have things like amusement parks, uh, zoos, uh, things like. Um, science museums, uh, stuff which, uh, and parks as well, stuff which kids uh, will be more into than just going to ancient temples and things like that. Um, but don't discount going out to more remote areas. Um, if you go to places uh, like uh, Tibet and Sichuan or places like Inner Mongolia, you can go horse riding and do things like that. I'd say one of the, one of the best things to do is to find a, a, a good hostel, a good youth hostel, um, and make that your base uh, because they will um, have tours set up which are generally pretty family friendly and generally have English speakers which will help the children uh, enjoy that experience. They're, they're more activities based, the tour, the, the youth hostels, than an ordinary hotel. So they'll be able to give you a few ideas of, of places to, uh, to stay. If you, afterwards, if you want to um, get some advice on particular hostels, I can tell you. Um, if you give me an idea of what cities you're going to, I can maybe recommend a couple of hostels uh, that will be a good place to kind of base your, your trip uh, tours and stuff like that.